start off though by thanking Bill Fornell for his presentation because it's yeah. a lot better than mine. <laughs> uh, and that, that was fantastic. Yes, I'm, I'm managing expectations here because I don't have nearly as many photographs. My, my family, I don't know, they, they just, they didn't take pictures and, yeah. and they're very secretive to begin with. But So I, I really, I threw together some, some pictures though to talk through, but, and, and that's why I brought these themes, uh, things to think through since there's such a lack of, of interesting pictures and historic pictures uh, around town that think of the themes as we go through these. And basically, uh, the first one is Westward Hole, the, uh, the uh, Route 66 migration, which my parents took, uh, birth of aerospace, because my father, uh, both my mother and my father were involved in aerospace, and this is the birthplace, the South Bay was the birthplace of aerospace in, um, in, the, in the country. Uh, the nuclear family, uh, it's me and my brother, there are four of us, two kids, and, and my mom and dad, Cost of housing, all things are relative, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Pros and cons along the uh, analog versus digital divide. Uh, I'm one of those, like Bill and a few others, of a certain generation that really our, our analog lives have gone to digital. And, and we remember when there were just you know seven channels on the TV and there were no Walkmans. There weren't no, we actually had to go outside and play. <laughs> and we were out in the sunlight and things like that. So uh, that really is something that, that has stuck with me. Right. Service above self, the importance of place and the role of history in the future. And I, I say that too with a, a big hand to James for starting all this. Yeah. Yeah. Because this, this is an absolutely fantastic organization. We love our historic society, but bring folks together who, for and sharing that knowledge. Uh, the long time uh, folks who've been here in Manhattan Beach and can uh, pass on that knowledge from generation to generation. That's why I was so happy with the, um, the application, reducing the, the price so that folks who want to uh, maintain their house in historic status will continue to do so. Um, with that, let's go to the first one. My mom. <laughs> oh, the so my, my mom was uh, born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but uh, really grew up all over America because she was an army brat. And so she went all over and uh, Janesville, Wisconsin, and Florida, and all these things, uh, all these different places. And uh, I've got a number of pictures of her from her youth. I mean, she's a cowgirl. She's uh, those are the Shirley Temple days in the middle there. Um, and she was born in 1935. My dad, born in 1927, which I guess is no longer the. Uh, anniversary of Berkeley founding. Um, that's him. So his, his parents uh, came over uh, through Ellis Island from Italy. Uh, Napolitano basically were the, well it's, it's semi uh, scarce around these parts. Uh, there's lots of Napolitanos back east where they immigrated through Ellis Island and they settled in New York and Boston and Maine of all places. And my dad was uh, born and raised in Portland, Maine. And uh, his grandfather, his grandfather, his father, came uh, on the boat. I think it was 1908 from Naples, Italy. Napolitano basically means uh, citizen of Naples. So we're the Smiths of, of Naples. <laughs> They're everywhere in, in Naples, Italy. But uh, they come over here, and uh, my my uh, my grandfather was one of uh, 15 kids. My grandmother was one of 14 kids. Uh, they met, they were in Maine. I know a lot more about my dad's side of the family than my mom's side of the family. They don't tell me anything, really. Um, but so, you know, growing up there, he went to the University of Maine, then he couldn't get out of there fast enough. And so he took Route 66 with a couple friends. He had a couple friends who had moved out to California. And like a lot of folks at, at that time, uh, they wanted to get away from the cold, get away from their parents, and go see what was going on on the other coast, uh, where things were blossoming out here. You had uh, colleges, you had um, different industries coming forward, and you had cheap land, not as cheap anymore. Um, so <laughs> there's my, my mom, who uh, entered into the uh, flight attendants. My dad, that's uh, when he served in Korea. Uh, he was over there for a couple of years in the uh, early 50s, right before the, the war really broke out, actually. And uh, then when they came back, they crossed the country, uh, not together, uh, separately, but then came out here. Uh, the promised land, there's my obligatory <laughs> pier shot, thank you. Uh, that is from the, the, the 50s, though. And uh, the old cars coming up, yeah, Rexall uh, drugstore right there, uh, different 
shops along the way there, the parking, uh, no trees. Yeah, I, I took that off the internet, so my apologies to anybody. I, I don't know what exact year it was, but you can see the cars. The cars though. Yeah, you can there see. Wasn't the ballet parking? <laughs> yeah, there's no ballet parking. Lamar Theater would be over here. It'd be up further there. Um, would be on the left. Where the uh, rock and fish and stuff. Buccaneer. The Buccaneer. Yep. Yep. So this is where my my mom and dad they both worked in aerospace at uh, Rockwell International. If you remember that, McDonnell Douglas. They had all the different companies around the South Bay, and, and like I said, aerospace really started in Hawthorne and spread from there. And uh, the campus of T R W Thompson. Uh, yeah, I was getting there. I said. My dad put the phones in that building. There you go. <laughs> So Thompson, Raymond, Woolridge, they actually start off as an automotive parts a company, got into aerospace, moved out here, uh, and this is a, a beautiful campus at the time um, uh, that was built and designed by A.C. Martin uh, Architects, but it was a beautiful campus, and it was really, I mean, that was just, it was an amazing place where the folks working there were the folks that were putting men on the moon and uh, sending satellites into space and everything. And of course, that's the, the tallest building around, and that has been taken over by Northrop Grumman ever since. But uh, it, it started there, and so they both worked in the industry. And as they, they worked in the industry, they would move from job. My dad would tell the stories, though. Uh, they would work on project-specific things. So you would work on a project for a while, and then you'd be laid off. And he and his friends did as well as they could to plan their layoffs for the summer. And so, because they would come down and they would play volleyball at the beach and they would have beers and friends and they had artist friends, Kenny Draper, if you know that name, actually have one of his paintings, but uh, he would do paintings, sell them, and if he couldn't make rent, he'd give a painting to his landlord, apparently, and they'd uh, give a pass for another month. But, um, so there was this great group of folks from the East Coast who made it out here to the West Coast who still hung out and tried to hang out as much as possible during the summer and play volleyball and have fun and everything on the beaches. Which brings us to Erkowitz. <laughs> However you want to pronounce it. And it says established 1927, so we'll fix that. <laughs> so this was, uh, this was South Bay headquarters for my dad. Uh, when his dad would come out to visit, they would go down and play pool. They won a number of turns there, in fact, uh, my dad and his friends laid the floor. I know it's probably been laid over many different times since, but he, he was, spent the afternoon laying the floor so to erase the bar tab, I guess. And, um, <laughs> but the, the thing that I find most interesting, besides the fact that it's been passed on from generation to generation to Politanos, is that the guy who built this, and you've been inside in the carved wood and everything, it's kind of between Swiss chalet and who knows what, because it has a, a, um, a kind of a, uh, a porch um, roof on the inside, all the carved, uh, the adobe brick that's out front still, and you'll see that in the doors and everything, that's the same guy who built the house that my parents bought. And I'll get to that in a second. It's the same, is, is it built? I don't know, we haven't been able to find the name. I think my parents have it, but I wasn't able to uh, extract it from them. But um, the guy who built this built several other places around town. And you can always tell because for whatever reason, he took the beams. He loved carving little chunks out of the beams. So it would just be, um, I don't know what you'd call it, a copic. You'd, you'd, you'd carve edges off of the beams, the two by fours, the four by fours as they're being built. And uh, so he did that. He did the three houses in a row that I'll tell you about on Walnut Avenue from 1305 uh, to uh, 914. My parents bought the house at 14th and uh, Walnut Avenue at 1305, but the three houses in succession were built with uh, all these materials. And in remodeling them over the years, you, tear down, you take out a wall to remodel and you put a drywall to replace it, but this guy was cheap as could be who could build these things because the adobes were filled with um, uh, tin cans to save on space. And then the, uh, the walls themselves, they were, they were kind of recessed. They had this paneling, recessed paneling. You turn over the paneling and they were old shipping crates for the aerospace industry. You, they'd have the markings of Northrop Grumman or Rockwell and other things. So, and if you remember um, the Chinese restaurant, it's called Taishan? Yeah. Same builder. 
Same builder did that, but yeah. homes in a couple different places around town. So, uh, Erkley's though uh, is where they would meet after work, and uh, while they were still single. And so, uh, bye bye being single, things one thing led to another. They got married, and there's my brother, and uh, I include him because I try to embarrass him at every chance I can get. <laughs> and so, uh, this I don't know where this is. Uh, doesn't look like Manhattan Beach growing up, but I know where this is. The, these were the apartments that used to be down on the northeast corner. There's still apartments there now. They were rebuilt the northeast corner of Manhattan Beach Boulevard and Ardmore. And so they, um, my mom and dad uh, lived, actually my dad had an apartment down along Manhattan Beach Boulevard there for um, a couple of years. And uh, when they got married, they moved into the one uh, on the corner there. I uh, had my, my brother there, and uh, that's my, my grandmother uh, coming to visit out there. But those were the apartments that have been torn down, rebuilt since then. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> then I came along uh, <laughs> and, uh, to, to bring some better looking kids into the family. And then, uh, so I came along, and then I, I include this because this is my brother before. This is. May of 66, so just a couple months after I was born. I was born in March of 66. And um, this is before he realized uh, the impact I was going to have in his life, where he's still happy in his sailor suit. But this is down at the pier, uh, right here. Looking back, you've got the, um, you've got the uh, parking lots uh, still there. Shellback is over there. La Paz uh, would be over there, or what was there before it. And so that's looking up um, Manhattan Beach Boulevard there from the pier, and, and you can notice the, uh, the pylons, there not much going on at the base of the pier there. There wasn't the, um, the lifeguard station that there is now like that, and everything. But yeah, so that's uh, at the pier, the base of the pier, looking up, looking east uh, toward up Manhattan Beach Boulevard. Was that Shellback? Is that still there? Yeah, that's the building. That's the building that's in. So that was that. This is, um, uh, that's me. And if, for those who don't know, uh, you can tell, I can. Uh, so that's American Martyrs. That's uh, Deegan Place now. It used to be called Church Street. So that's uh, my dad taking me out of Mass there. American Martyrs, what I grew up going to. Uh, that is the apartment that they were in. Me, my mom, my brother. And uh, since we were a growing family, we needed more room, so we had to get out. So there's Chateau Napolitano. That was the uh, sales photo, actually, of the place. Uh, this weird, again, this guy, I don't know where he came yeah, up with these designs, this mansard roof, you have the garage over here, and it really doesn't look much different today, I got rid of the mansard roof, but uh, here's the, here's actually the advertisement for it, uh, it got, it got cut down, yeah, $22,000 22, is what the ending, uh, the price was, uh, by the time we bought it, that was 1967. Yeah. Three, in fact, yeah, three, I think 22, 1967, $22,000, 1305 Walnut is where they still live. My dad turned 90 in December. Uh, my mom is um, 82. And so they are still there in that house. Not a lot has changed. 800 square feet. Starting out, it was 800 square feet. Uh, again, the same architect. Uh, they added on uh, a bit to it, but not a lot. There's, it's not two stories, still a single story. Still has this curved patio out front. Garage is still the same and everything. Uh, their monthly payment, their mortgage was $100 a month. Uh, of course, you know, all things being relative, my dad didn't make a whole lot uh, working at TRW at the time either. And so, um, but they made ends meet and had uh, food on the table and clothes on our back. But. Um, then this is, this is us growing up at the house. Uh, my mom in the 50s, uh, beehive, bouffant hairdo. Uh, the porch is the same. Uh, that's my brother before church, our great, uh, our great uh, jackets there with the emblems on them. My brother about to clock me with the golf club, <laughs> including that. Not much has changed over the years in that relationship. Um, but yeah, the fence is still standing and everything. Uh, so the awkward family photos. Uh, this is more photos of us uh, there. I, you know, it's just I should have shared a lot. I could speak probably more off Bill's photos than even my own <laughs> because it, you know a lot of the same things. You notice the Van shoes here. Of course, the South Bay home of Van shoes. 
our tricycles, me being in terror, um, but lots going on terror, at the time. What you say? I know. Uh, analog fun. This is Christmas time in the house. We were the uh, we were so proud of having a 13 inch uh, black and white TV, uh, where you actually had to get up out of your chair and change the channels or turn it up or down. Uh, you know, that was in the 800 square foot envelope right there. Everything was crammed into one, but I don't even know what that thing is that he's holding. Maybe it's a Frisbee. We had trucks and things like that. But, um, you know, I, to tag along, I, I always get a kick listening to Russ Lesser talk about growing up here because, a lot, again, a lot of the same themes that run through it, and I'm sure Bill can say the same, is that, you know, when we, especially during the summer, Right? We would just leave in the morning, find some friends, walk around town, go to the beach. We were everywhere. We didn't come home until it got dark. When the lights go down, that's when we were supposed to go home. My parents didn't know we were. There were no cell phones. There were no tracking us or anything. <laughs> Did we get in trouble? Sometimes. Not a lot. Uh, because there was this network of parents who would tell on us, and then they'd get the telephone call. With the rotary phone, they'd call up each other and everything. And it was just a, a great time. Manhattan Beach was a great place to grow up. Uh, you know, El Segundo likes to take the moniker. Is anyone here from El Segundo? Okay, good. All right, I'll, I'll change this thing. No, but you know, it, it's, it, they used to write, um, they, they, they've taken over the moniker of Mayberry by the Sea, uh, but really, to me, growing up, this was, was Mayberry. Um, El Segundo. I remember what, being called the sewer. El, El Segundo <laughs> was where uh, uh, the the uh, Sanford and Son would say El Segundo. So, but here uh, a lot of small homes, a lot of renters. You had teachers, you had uh, folks, flight attendants uh, who could afford to live here, and there were a lot of renters, but but small homes, open yards, and we'd get up in the morning uh, in the summer and we'd run out, find some friends. And then we'd find other friends because we'd, if we wanted to do something, we'd have to find other friends. If you wanted to start a softball game, we'd go around and say, hey, you want to play softball? Meet us at Live Oak at uh, 1 o'clock. And a group of kids, amazingly, would show up at 1 o'clock and we'd all play. And then we'd go and the next day something else would, would come up and we'd go down. And uh, this is up, down, so growing up at, at 1305 Walnut, up the street, this is, my brother here, this is Virginia McMartin. This is McMartin oh, yes. Preschool. That's my brother in the middle. Uh, this is me. Uh, if you remember, McMartin Preschool had two, two places. It was one up my street on Walnut Avenue where the Strand Cleaners is now. That was the second one. So, well, two places. That, and the first one was down where the beach market was, which is now uh, Noah's um, and uh, Noah's Bagels, the Jamba Juice. And uh, before, that, so we would have um, our month that was on the Halloween, of course, and uh, we ha they would have a parade around the downtown. We go around the block, and was that? Second one in on the bottom row is Robin. It's her daughter. Yeah. Is that right? Robin. Uh huh. <laughs> Robin wrote up. It? I, I think that's her. It sure looks like her picture. Well, the names are right there. I don't, I don't see. see it. Uh -uh. I don't see it. But there are a couple of familiar names in there. See right. Yeah. Uh, is in there and a few others, but so they would have a parade downtown uh, on Halloween. We go around the block and everything. I remember one kid, Mark Duco, who I grew up with. Um, he had a uh, robot uh, outfit on, and that consisted back then, right? It wasn't your parents going out and buying you this elaborate thing. You had to make your own. So he had a cardboard box with these tubes that were corrugated, and he couldn't sit down. The poor kid couldn't sit down because he was in this cardboard box walking around. But uh, so that was uh, McMartin Preschool, and went there, and then uh, from there went to Pacific School. <laughs> and Pacific School, this was, right when that was the cafeteria right here, and this is basically the divide line, because this was behind, the building behind, that was center school offices. And I went to center, because it was right up the street, we up to, I literally walked uphill both ways to school. And American Mars steeple in the background. But uh, Pacific School was over here. And then, uh, that's, actually, that's my brother over there. And uh, Center School over here and, and to the north. And to the south was Pacific School. So I went to Pacific School and Center School. My brother did the same uh, before they closed down Center. And if you remember, across the street from there, uh, Pacific, Pacific was and Center were, were two sides of the street. It was... Um, 12th going through there. It was kindergarten first, 
and second grade for Pacific, and then they'd have a couple of seventh, eighth grade middle school classes that would rotate in and out of there. I remember going over there and mm -hmm. taking social studies at the time that I was attending center school. And so it was great, it was wonderful having both schools so close and being able to, to go up to them. And we would, you know, when school wasn't in session, you'd find us up on the roof doing things. And, but it was, and that's where I started playing volleyball at court five at center <laughs> school, remember court five, anybody. Um, but no, so going there, um, different teachers, are, and then off to the right school, Maricosta, after that. Yeah. But, uh, just kidding. Did you see the 12th court used to go all the way through to Pacific? I'm trying to think, no, it was, uh, no, not, not to Pacific, it was from Pacific um, over to the, war, the church. Over the war. It was the right. west, right across the street, right. where 12th, that used to be school property. Right, and that, and that was uh, sold off. <laughs> And so when they closed down center, they sold that off and developed homes over there. So that's the homes on the on the west side of Pacific there, leading to the church. Uh, same as Bill, we had a, a picture of, of uh, you know Disneyland. Disneyland that was when we had they had the tickets, the e-ticket e rides. E you know they still had the tickets. You bought the ticket booklets. Uh, my brother looking very suspicious of Mickey there. I was having a good time, but uh, you know we grew up going there. I used to go through the parks and recreation trips during the summer. My mom, again, would give us a couple of dollars, we'd buy the ticket to go down there. You'd take the bus with a bunch of other local kids to the Parks and Recreation Department and go to Disneyland for the day, and then you'd come back. I don't know why I put that other picture in there, except I think my brother's upset about something. Over there. <laughs> so, again, trying to embarrass him at every time. Uh, something not so embarrassing, though, this is my brother again skateboarding. Uh, skateboarding back then was a, a big deal. We just recently uh, opened up the skateboard park be behind the Marine Avenue baseball field, and that's great. But back then, you had really you had few places to skateboard, and you had the, you changed from the old rock wheels to the urethane wheels, which was great. But there were a couple of skate parks you'd go to. One was in Torrance, then there'd be other ones in Bray and elsewhere where you'd pay. You'd pay to go to them, and the cities didn't have them. Hermosa Beach was the first one around here to put in a skate park. But back then, we used to basically go to our friends' pools. We would actually <laughs> empty the pools of water, and much to the chagrin, or find a uh, house, <laughs> uh, or find a house that was being torn down with a pool in it, and skateboard around there. And uh, my brother, I remember my parents getting a phone call uh, in the evening one day. It was uh, Manhattan Beach Police Department, and they were saying, uh, um, "You know, your son. We picked him up." <laughs> Why did you pick him up? Skateboard in the pool that was being rehabbed at the old Pen and Quill Hotel. <laughs> they were re they were redoing remodeling the whole hotel, and uh, they had emptied the pool. So a bunch of him and his friends were were skateboarding in it to the joy of the guests that were staying there. They looked down watching, and they were really upset when they. Uh, took him away, but yeah, so that was my, my parents' phone call. But that, another thing that we did, we just would get on the skateboards. Uh, it was big back then. You'd have people building ramps in their backyards. That was a big deal. I remember my friend uh, Andy Lelm, he had this very, on, on, uh, on Poinsettia Avenue, uh, east uh, or north of um, 19th Street there, he had this very steep driveway going down. It was wonderful, but you had to navigate it because the, then there was the garage at the end of and so you had to build the ramp to the left of the garage and you had to make it so that you went straight down and then you turned in enough time without hitting the garage to get on the ramp to pick up the speed to go back and forth. But we plywood everything, that was a big deal, building uh, ramps around town at that point. Awkward photos of my brother and myself and our gawky teenage years. Um, Outside the house, we had many, I mean, that's where we spent our time, outside the house. We rarely were inside. We were out running around with our friends. There were some of our friends there. Uh, my brother with his awkward mustache, but, you know, the OPs, the short shorts, oh, yeah. the OPs, the stubby shorts, the surf uh, wear from way back then. No, from Young Gentry, thank you, Marty. Absolutely. <laughs> that is exactly where we would buy those things. If you wanted Levi's and turtlenecks and rugby shirts, you'd go down to, to Young Gentry, which is now with the, uh, the, um, uh, frozen yogurt shop, Mary I think. It is. I don't know. Surprise store. The gelato. Surprise. Yeah, surprise, surprise store down in Hermosa, which yeah. was another one where we would frequent. Um, that was the overgrown yard and everything. This is just 
you know, during <laughs> high school and, and then I may start I have a beard. I hope I started college then. But so when everybody else was, was going away, we had a few people who said, oh, I want to get out of here and everything. But to me, it was always, why would you want to go anywhere else? And so I ended up going to a lot of the local schools and graduated from uh, Loyola Marymount. And uh, I, I think I was going to school there. The volleyball, uh, still play. That was the bottom shot here. Is my friend Charlie and I won our, winning our first tournament. Uh, holding Michelob Lab, I think we were 18, so <laughs> don't tell anybody. But uh, a lot of this is in, in Hermosa Beach, uh, where we can get away with more than in Manhattan Beach. Um, but uh, just a lot of good fun. Another, another great community, just like growing up and, and just running around the streets on our bikes. I mean, we biked everywhere. Uh, I, I laugh at sometimes, well, how are they going to get there? Well, you know, ride your bike or walk. I had to ride my bike to high school. I didn't have a car back then. Um, you know, we used to go to the biggest deal was if we wanted to, okay, this is an all-day trip, guys. We're going to go down to Maria Del Rey. You take the bike path. Mm -hmm. First uh, bike I owned, I bought from Ted Ernst. Yeah. Um, yeah. As my parents got it for me. When did the bike path go in? Do you recall? The bike path, I don't know. Yeah, mid 70s. Mid 70s, yeah. Because we were able to, to go down it, uh, the Marvin Brownie bike path. But that was a big deal because we used to bike. A big deal to us was going down to um, El Trasco and getting a 50 cent taco and some uh, cheese and chips with some guacamole. But just we would, we would bike everywhere. There wasn't a place around town that we didn't know, or back alley or anything else. Is that Akatubi there in the middle upper picture with you? No, that's uh, Joe Del Rego, another uh, uh, guy that, that, who uh, I grew up with. We played soccer together. I was an AYSO for a number of years. And uh, he is uh, one of the bartenders down at Shellback. Mm -hmm. And he used to own the, um, the side door uh, yeah. bar down there and everything. But another local family, uh, Potatoes Del Riego, that you'll find on the Uncle Bill's uh, menu is uh, named for his brother, who <laughs> always ordered this, this special uh, mix of uh, potatoes. And uh, Uncle Bill is another uh, place where I grew up with him. My, my mom uh, did the... Um, the mural on the wall down there, it's still on there. your ranking in the AVP? <laughs> I played AVP, but uh, we'll ignore the ranking <laughs> question. Uh, my, rank, my ranking was uh, do as well as I could. <laughs> but uh, I played a lot of the, the Manhattan and uh, Hermosa and Seal Beach Opens and things locally. Uh, and a lot of the, um, but the Seal but and thanks Wayne though, for bringing back that, because again, another great community though, growing up was the uh, beach volleyball community and really got playing when I was 16 onward uh, on the beach. But it's just amazing the connections you can maintain and people you come across uh, in everyday life now because I mean, we would go from Zuma to Dana Point uh, every weekend we were playing a tournament. And you'd be, and you'd be working up the ranks, and you'd be playing against the same people who were trying to work up the ranks too. And while they were you know, frenemies then and competitors, we're all friends now. We see each other still at four-man tournaments and everything. So it's just a, a great community growing up playing that. And I encourage. This was um, this was my first photo uh, for. This is the photo I used for running for city council the first time. Uh, you'll notice I didn't have a tie because I didn't know how to tie one. Um, <laughs> that was I think I borrowed the suit jacket. It's Italian. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know it's one of those things where and I mentioned the, the progression was. I was going to school at the time at Loyola Marymount, and I had uh, concern over the direction of my beloved uh, Manhattan Beach. I thought that we were building too much, not listening to people enough. And so um, there were, I, I opened up the Manhattan Beach, uh, the Beach Reporter, uh, and it was the last day. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was the last day to file. I read, okay, last day to file for, for City Council. I thought, well, I can only either complain about things or do something about them. I said, well, it's time to do something about them. So I ran down, got my nomination papers. I went around, got the minimum 20 signatures, turned them in, and they kicked out one of the names. A uh, woman lived across the street from me all my life. Um, she didn't understand what I was asking, whether she was a, uh, a registered voter or not, I guess, because she's a Canadian national. So they kicked her name out. So I had the choice then whether to continue on as a write-in candidate, and this was uh, 1990, uh, or wait two years and, and get on the ballot then, because it's a lot easier when you're on the ballot. But I decided that no, it was, it was worth it, and I needed to put my, uh, my effort where my mouth was on the uh, volleyball photo. 
we went door to door. We didn't have any money. And it's, it's the popular thing to do, but we did it out of necessity. We printed up a whole bunch of flyers and just started going to, we hit every door in Manhattan Beach. And um, you know, the thing about being a writing candidate though, they have to, they have to write your name on the, they have to spell it right. Oh dear. And they have to punch the hole as well. And so there were actually, the, the night of the vote counting, the poor city clerk driving her, her crazy having to go through these things, they're hanging chads everywhere, they were still, you know, it's like, I, I swear there were a hundred. But I, so I missed being the, uh, the mayor by a, a hundred votes and then didn't make it. But uh, went on in, in 92 to get on the ballot and got elected there. And, and it's just um, serving uh, others and being able to serve others in my hometown, as Bill was saying, just the most rewarding thing uh, that I can imagine. And it's, it's nothing about me and Wayne, former mayor, as well, and we've got several commissioners here. It's just, you, you want to give so much back and you're, you're trying to do so much good, and it's not about you, it's about the community. And uh, again, that's why I applaud James for, for putting all this together. Um, I, there are some other folks. My time with Supervisor Kanabi, uh, I was really uh, happy to be working with him because I was able to, to give back on an even bigger scale because I covered the entire South Bay and and um, uh, fourth district of LA County, which has two million people. And, and the LA County has 10 million people. We'd be the largest, we'd be the eighth largest state in the nation if we were a state in terms of population, a $30 billion economy. So I uh, was able to give, that's at the, um, uh, that was actually announcing Don as a local legend for the um, Best of Manhattan Beach Awards a couple of years ago. And then the next generation, uh, our kids, we've got our house, well, James, I know you gave a presentation on the house across from ours at 6th and John uh, there, where it used to belong to Sandy Ray, if, if that name is familiar to anyone. Uh, we bought a house in, in 2010, and um, uh, Sandy Ray uh, had been there for 50 years. He had built it, and it was just a, it was an amazing place, mid-century modern. You know, we, we bought it with the idea, well, maybe uh, tear it down someday and build something new, but the more we looked at it, uh, the more that uh, we're both from uh, basically the, the uh, space age, uh, where it was just mid-century modern was, was great, it was about the future, it was about the optimism, we looked around and said, it was single stories, and you know what, these are great bones, we're just going to take it down to the bones and polish it up and, and rebuild, and that's exactly what we did. And uh, I practiced what I preached uh, about low profile development, we didn't add a single square foot onto it. We're surrounded by mansions, and that's fine. Um, but uh, we like the, the way it's the, it's the northeast corner of 6th and John. Uh, white uh, uh, clapboard house with uh, rock underneath. How and it looks like two story because the garage is underneath it, but the, the, it's all one story. How many square feet is it? Uh, 3,500. Yeah, because it has kind of that L shape. Yeah, it is L shape. Yeah. yeah, it's got a big yard. That's it's got a, a big yard. Yeah. So the kids can run free. So those are. Um, our son Roman, our daughter Nola, she's six and attending Robinson. I tried to get her to my alma mater of Pacific, but oh well. And then he's at the Montessori at, at Bell, and uh, so they're the next generation. And then uh, that was back to the future. Um, the, uh, the good folks of Manhattan Beach uh, uh, were nice enough to elect me again to the city council where I'm uh, very happy uh, to be serving again. There's a a lot uh, that we're trying to get done. Uh, we can't talk about everything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying to get done. But you know, again, it goes back to to me, back to the future, and it's also I think uh, you know I'm I'm proud to have been born and raised here and serving on the city council. I think it does give a different perspective, uh, having been here all my life, and uh, being that uh, invested in the community as you have been, and uh, I I guess I'm I. You know, the thing that makes it special besides uh, the fact that I, you know, the sense of giving back and, and helping maintain what we have is the, the people that I've come across. And uh, it's really the relationships that I've built. And this is a relationship business, being in public service. I can tell you that we just have some incredible people here. The, the guy, when we talked about, um, you talked about, uh, you know, working on the Hughes. Uh, point, which I guess yesterday was the anniversary of the cross uh, continent uh, record. So, um, the guy across the street from me, this old guy, he'd open up his garage, and he'd tinker around. They had all these, all these tools, all the machines in the world. 
uh, Oli, Oli Olson, and uh, and he would he opened up a book one, and this was I mean just a fantastic guy, very giving, and uh, but just a, a great character, but always tinker around. So I was all over there. He let me just hang out and watch him do all his stuff, and I was just in awe of his abilities and everything. And it turns out and he, that someone else showed me a book that he was in. He used to work with uh, Dr. Goddard. He worked on the first rockets uh, that sent uh, that went up, and sent and eventually worked on the rockets that sent man into space too. So just a lot of history, a lot of incredible people here, a lot of incredible people in this room. I, I'm just I'm thankful that you come together like this, though I really am. Uh, because I think this should be done more. Uh, you know, in schools, they have uh, the history lessons for California history and the U U.S. history, but I wish there was just an assembly, maybe one day out of the year, where someone would come in and give a presentation on their city's history, because it's important to know where that we've been so that they know where to go and how to keep it special. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you.